Welcome back. In this week's video, we're gonna be talking about five tips, five hacks, five tricks, five things that you can incorporate into your Lightroom workflow that'll help you save countless hours. It'll save you a lot of time. It saved me a lot of time while editing photos, trying to get stuff delivered to clients, trying to get stuff uploaded. There are things that if you don't use already, I highly recommend you try them out and hopefully they'll increase your productivity in Lightroom. So let's get started on number one. So today's video is spent less on the actual edit of the photos, but rather more focused on what you can do to actually decrease the amount of time you spend on each photo. So the first tip is something that I use very often, and it's that once you've finished editing your photo, you can actually go ahead and apply this exact edit to another photo, and you can apply it to multiple photos at one time. So all you have to do is press Command C, and that'll come up with a copy settings panel. And so what you can do is you can actually click and decide which settings you, that you've edited that you wanna copy. For instance, I often have transform and local brushes turned off and spot removal as well as crop because I don't want that to affect every photo that I end up pasting these settings onto. So what I do is I go ahead and make sure that most of these are selected, especially the basic tone, the color, the stuff that you do with the colors. I'll press copy. So you can go ahead and click and manually apply this to a single photo by pressing command V and that'll apply the same exact effects. I've already applied the effects to this photo but you can actually go ahead and apply these effects to multiple photos at once. So let's say that I wanted to apply this to maybe 20 photos at once. I'll go ahead and click the first set that I want to apply this to, hold down shift, click the end that I've select all these photos at once, and then do the same thing, press command V, and then it'll apply the effects and the uh, adjustments directly to the photos. And that'll save you a lot of time when you want to edit multiple photos that have sh been shot in like a similar scene or similar lighting scenario. Tip number two comes along the same ilk as the first tip, and that is trying to save time when you're trying to apply your settings to multiple photos at once. Instead of copying and pasting settings, what you can actually do is create a user preset. So when you create a user preset, this essentially copies all these settings and saves them for future use. So if you go on the left hand side here and go to presets, if you click the plus button, you can go ahead and create preset. What this does, it brings up a similar panel to the copy settings panel. You can go ahead and select the things that you want to apply to every photo when this preset is selected. Typically, I leave transform not selected as well as gradual, graduated and radio filters. And I'll go ahead and click create. And now if I wanted to apply the same edit as previously to this photo, instead of copying and pasting, all I have to do is go down to untitled preset one and boom. You can tell all of the edits are there. It's the same as the original photo that you've already edited. And now you can go ahead and alter things this is especially helpful when you have a certain style that you've developed. You go ahead and create your own presets and then in future shoots, you can go ahead and apply those presets from previous sets and it'll save you a lot of time. The third tip deals with quick collections. Quick collections are a great way to go ahead and select photos from a set real quickly and isolate them so that you can go ahead and export them, do other things to them later. So all you have to do is click B and this is now added to Quick Collections. By selecting photos that you've already edited and adding them to my Quick Collection, later on, that'll save you time and you don't have to go back through all of your photos to find the ones that you've already edited. So now if I go down to All Photographs and click Quick Collection. So now for instance, all the photos that I've added that I've edited, I now have here in Quick Collections and I can go ahead and select just these photos and export them for later use. This saves me a lot of time when I wanna find photos that I just wanna to select to export. Another tip is that once you finish your quick collection and you wanna move on and create a new quick collection, all you have to do is press Command Shift B and that'll get rid of all the photos and it'll deselect all of them from your quick collection. One thing that I used to do in order to see photos that I've actually edited just in one session, I would go to Library, go down to View, Sort, and sort by, you can sort by multiple multitude of things, but I do sort by edit time. And now it'll show you in order the photos that you've edited chronologically. So if you want to quickly see the photos that you've edited just in one session and you don't want to use quick collections and you just want to see the ones that you've slightly altered, this will go ahead and put in order the photos that you've edited. And this is a great way to see the photos that you've edited in one session and go ahead and select them and you can do whatever you want with them. But that's just a real quick way besides quick collections. This view, sort, and you can do obviously by added time, capture time, edit count, etc. 
fourth tip is something that I use very often and it is showing different aspect ratios and cropping for your photos. With Instagram, obviously cropping your photos, I think to like a four by five ratio. This is super important. So all you have to do is click the crop overlay. You can also do this by pressing R. And once you have R or crop overlay selected, you can press O on your keyboard and this will toggle through various crop overlays that'll help greatly. And one of the ones I like a lot is this four by five, five by seven, two by three. It'll show you exactly what your crop ratio looks like at these different aspect ratios. And this helps a lot. All of these are super, super helpful. Another thing that you can do if you don't already, you can go ahead and click original in this aspect ratio here. And so if you want to export something to, let's say IG and you want it four by five, they'll have preset aspect ratios here for cropping. And then I'll have it set up for you four by five. You press enter, press done, and it'll crop it for you automatically. And that saves you a lot of time. And finally, one of the biggest things that I use oftentimes in my productivity workflow is when I have multiple images selected, again, I'll hold down shift and click from one side. I'll have one selected, click shift on the other side. That'll select all four images. What I'll do is go, I'll go to file, export. And this export panel is fantastic. There's a lot of different things that you can do. Oftentimes I'll go ahead and I'll put edits in a subfolder. So you actually, you can actually name the folders that you put these edits into. So oftentimes I'll click the folder where I originally had the photos and I'll put them in a subfolder called edits. So I'll know which photos that I've edited. Another one is that you can do custom name. One that I use a lot is called custom name sequence. So it'll name every photo YouTube edits dash and it'll start. Obviously this one starts at one, but you can start at whatever number you can start at 10 if you want. And it'll label them in order 10 through, since there's four photos, 11, 12, and 13. So 10 to 13. And those will be your custom names for your photos. The final thing that I often keep an eye on is when I export as JPEGs, I limit the file size, especially when you edit raw photos, they often be really, really large. If you want to save time and kind of compress your photos really quickly, I'll go ahead and set this to either 3000 or 2000. That's equivalent to three megabytes or two megabytes. And it'll still create a really high quality image for you, but it'll limit the size your JPEG ends up coming out, which is really, really helpful when you want to export or send photos to a client and you want to send hundreds of photos and you want your file sizes over like 20 gigabytes. Yeah, these are all great tips if you want to save time in your file selection process. So those were five tips that I incorporate into my day-to-day -day Lightroom editing workflow. They saved me a lot of time time is money. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and like the video. It helps a lot. Subscribe, turn on post notifications and stay tuned. I'll see you guys in the next one.